the Storm have started to win, the Seahawks start training camp, and the Mariners have a lackluster trade deadline. Alrighty, welcome back to the Seattle Sports Show. I'm your host, Mikey, and uh, we got some things to talk about today. The first thing we're going to talk about is our main topic, the Seattle Mariners moves at the trade deadline. Okay, here is what they did. The, The biggest move they pulled off was uh, the trade of Paul Seawald. Okay, Paul Seawald was traded uh, to the Arizona Diamondbacks, and we receive Ryan Bliss, Dominic Canzone, and Josh Rojas. That, that, that was our big blockbuster move. Uh, out of everything that we did. Now, uh, we'll just mention the other couple of small moves they made real quick. AJ Pollock was traded uh, along with Mark Mathias uh, for cash considerations, and Logan Reinhardt was traded for Edward Bizarro. So, just basically reliever for reliever there. Uh, now, uh, you know, uh, Colton Wong, we have to mention here as well, he was uh, needed to be DFA'd uh, to bring in uh, to make enough room for the new uh, new players that we're bringing in from uh, Arizona. Now let's talk about how these moves affect the Mariners. Okay, again, Logan Reinhart and Edward Bizardo, just a trade of of bullpen pitchers, okay? AJ Pollock, Mark Mathias, just offloading him did not work out uh, for AJ Pollock, was not, ended up not being a good signing this year, just did not work, right? Uh, so, Paul Seawald, one of our most consistent uh, guys out of the bullpen, closing out a lot of games for us this year. And what do we get in return for him? Well, again, uh, Three guys out of Arizona, but nothing really, really special, right? Uh, We don't really know. All guys are young and have years of club control left. So that that's kind of what Paul Sewell got you. Uh, You know, he's got the rest of this year and next year left on his contract. Uh, But he brings us guys that have you know, three, four years left of club control. So we get these guys around for a while and hopefully they're going to work out. Uh, You know, we got a guy who's on the cusp of being in the big leagues. We got a guy that just got into the big leagues, uh, played today, I believe it was, so that was just his 16th game in the big leagues. And then, yeah, another guy, again, just, uh, just breaking in, right? I mean, these guys aren't, uh, it's not like these guys have uh, huge, spectacular numbers right now, but hopefully they're going to turn into something. So what does that mean? That means potentially they could have a good future with the Mariners. So is this a bad trade? Not necessarily, but it is a disappointing trade. I am so disappointed with the Mariners right now. This is what they did. Uh, I was... I, I I waited. Uh, you know, I was thinking maybe I would record a podcast back on Sunday. Then I thought, you know what? I just happen to have Tuesday off as well. Um, and that happens to be the trade deadline. I'll wait to record till after the trade deadline because, you know, they're probably going to make some more moves before the trade, de- uh, trade, trade deadline uh, comes up. Uh, they got to be making some bigger moves. And... 
the deadline comes and goes, and sure enough, they didn't. Again, so disappointing. Why is it so disappointing? I'll tell you why. We are sitting here in the standings just three and a half games back now from a wild card spot. And guess what? Nobody ahead of us wants it. Uh, Yankees on a losing streak right now. Angels, we all know that they have not been... Uh, They, they haven't been doing anything special, and I don't expect them to be. <laughs> you know, again, this is looking like it's probably going to be another year for them where they waste Trout and, and Shohei. You know, uh, I believe they have never been in the playoffs with the combinations. It, it just, just a waste, and it looks like they're going to be doing it again. Uh, we're playing against Boston right now. Uh, so, so, you know, they're competing with us for a spot, so... We just lost the game tonight. Hopefully we can win tomorrow and um, kind of keep them down while we go up. Uh, but then the people who actually have the wild card spots, uh, again, Toronto. We've seen them recently, and we see that uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are sliding down. They're themselves on a three-game losing streak right now. Uh, Houston, they've won a couple of games now, but... You know, it's not not like they've been super strong. Uh, this is you. It, 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 they're they're another team. It really could go either way for them. Uh, Tampa Bay. They're looking pretty good, <laughs> so uh, I, I don't want to say too much about that. But they're still, you know, uh, you know, within reach. I, I I suppose. But then, even more than that, what else is in reach? our own division. We are sitting here six games back in our division. Again, only six games back in our own division, three and a half games back in the wild card. Again, to me, this team is a team that has the potential to do big damage in the playoffs because of the makeup of this team in our pitching rotation. That was the whole dream to me this year, thinking that the Mariners were a potential World Series team. Is that we can just get to the playoffs? We just need to get the wild card spot again, and the, our pitching is so good they can carry us through the playoffs this year. It's and, and they're going to be even stronger this year, right? And. Look at the the Mariners pitching this year. Yeah, they they do look like a team that has a uh, has the pitching staff uh, that should be able to get you through and deep into the playoffs, potentially to a World Series. So it's just disappointing that we are that close, just three and a half games back in the wild card right now, and we're sitting with what like. Uh, 55 games left to go and multiple teams ahead of us for the wild card spot are sliding 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 down uh, as we are just coming off of a july which we had the second best record in all of baseball for the month you got to make bigger moves than that uh to to show this team that you believe in them and that you did believe before the season started that you could get a World Series this year. Uh, but with the moves they made, it doesn't really seem like they believe that. Uh, now, and then, that again, that's uh, Jerry Depoto's fault, right? He's the guy that went out and signed the guys to this team that uh, struggled, that we just let go. We just traded A.J. Pollock for cash. We DFA'd Colton Wong, just gone you know, for basically nothing. Those were, uh, turned out to be real bad signs. They looked like good signings at the time, but it turns out they did not help this team at all. Okay? But with how close this team still is, I wanted to see them say, okay, yeah, we struggled. That's on us, though. You guys kept us at 500 and above 500 now. Uh, second best record in the month of july you're showing us that you still want to go for this um 
But that's not what the front office said. They said, well, uh, we could get some players who should be an improvement over these players because uh, these players have been so bad this year. There's no real proof because, again, these guys are so young. There's no real proof that they are going to be better. But they should be better, right? Just because of how bad Pollock and Wong were. Uh, but it's not it, it's not going out and getting the guy that tells the team, yes, we still are, we still believe that we can go for a World Series this year. And if you don't believe me, then listen to Cal Raleigh, right? Uh, he had a quote saying that he they needed to go out and prove them wrong. And who is them? He's talking about the front office. He's talking about the guys that just traded away, uh, a guy that was beloved in the clubhouse, uh, Paul Seawald, and uh, they're just getting young, basically young prospects back for him, right? Uh, not the, not somebody who's telling the Mariners, okay, yes, we're getting rid of somebody we all like and has been so good for us this year, and we're trading him to get these couple of guys that should be an improvement. Um, that's That should have been the first step. The next step should have been going out uh, and still making another move that brought in the veteran proven bat that could help this lineup and and they just didn't do it. And that's really disappointing. Uh, I don't know the the Mariners right now, uh, the way they're playing, they're still looking like they're going to keep winning and they have, they still have fight in them. So they might just still get themselves there, but that's going to be without the help of the front office uh, and making moves that they needed to and should have made uh, for this year. Just uh, again, just really big bummer that they, uh, you know, because for the front office, what makes it really disappointing for me is that, you know, it's not just like it was the national media. It's, it wasn't just local media uh, that was saying, hey, this team looks like they could be a World Series team this year. It was the front office themselves saying, yeah. Uh, not only are local and national media saying that this Mariner team looks like they could be a World Series team, it was their own front office saying, yeah, we believe that too. We th- believe that this team has what it takes to get to the World Series. And now we get to the trade deadline and they're making moves saying, uh, you know what, maybe maybe we don't believe that. And maybe they never really did. Because if they did, uh, they would have made better moves than they made here and bigger moves than they made here because everybody they got rid of not Paul Seawald but the bats Colton Colton Wong AJ Pollock those were the mistakes that they made headed into this year and instead of saying you know what that was on us that was our big mistakes let us go out and get two players that are going to fix those two big mistakes we made, they just went out and kind of got band-aids. So really disappointing uh, that uh, with us being, again, just three and a half games back, that it doesn't feel like, you know, it's just from the start of the season and we're only to the trade deadline and it feels like the front office has already said, ah, we we did make big mistakes. we We can't go all in here, which is, you know, their own fault and really disappointing. All right, so there you go. Uh, there, there's your moves for the Mariners. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the games when we get to the the rundown. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the U.S. Women's National Team. Uh, since we last recorded, uh, they had some last luck, lackluster performances. They tied the Netherlands one to one. They had no energy in the first half of that game. Rose Lavelle of our local L- OL Rain came in and provided a ton of energy in that second half. And, and they needed it. They Because it turns out they needed that draw there. If they wanted up losing that game, that would have been horrible because we go into the game that we just played uh, against Portugal, which we uh, ended up with a draw in that game as well, 0-0. Rose Lavelle got the start, so at least... Um, 
They were smart enough to put her in the starting lineup this time. But unfortunately, she received a yellow card. Um, you know, and that's unfortunate because all we needed to do was win or draw, and we would be moving on. We got the draw. We're moving on. But Rose Lavelle will not get to play in the uh, in the round of 16 because of the accumulations that she has with the yellow cards that is going to suspend her for the round of 16 match. Um, again, and with the way she's been playing and providing energy to the team, that's going to be a real big bummer. Uh, you know, because... Uh, we've heard all kinds of talk about it this uh, week, right? <laughs> Especially after this uh, uh, draw with Portugal. That, yeah, they've been playing, it seems to be lackluster. Uh, and there's a couple of players uh, that are providing injury, and Rose Lavelle was one of them. Now, um, do I still think that that this team could go on and win the World Cup? Of, of course I do. They're the best team in the world. They're, they're not playing the dominant force that they usually are, but I think they're still the best team in the world. It will be the first time, uh, you know, a team has won three World Cups in, in a row, men or women, so odds are against them. That's obviously really hard to do but I think they can do it. Uh, they're, they're just going to have to uh, figure some things out, whether it's, uh, you know, figuring out how to stretch out the, 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 the defense um, so they can get uh, some better crosses and better shots on goal and their, and their defense as well. Right. Uh, you know, not quite always seeming like they're, quite quite awake at times uh we heard carly lloyd say that the the star of the last game was the post right because they almost lost in extra time uh thankfully the shot was off hit the post and uh we we ended up with a draw but if we would allow portugal to score there uh in the extra minutes uh there probably wasn't enough time for us to uh score another goal, uh, and be able to move on with the way they were playing. Now, with that being said, Carly Lloyd and Alexi Lalas, come on. I mean, they were just, like, being so ridiculous, especially Carly, right? Somebody who just retired uh, was on this uh, team very recently. You know, just going off, like, uh, talking about how, oh, it's disrespectful to see them dancing and having a time uh, smiling and have a good time out there after the game where they just uh pulled a draw where they almost lost hey they're moving on like like kelly o'hara said it right hey it's not always pretty but they did they they just did what they needed to do they got it done they're moving on to the next round um and uh you know what? I really don't mind seeing players going to the stands, taking pictures with fans, smiling, dancing with them. Yeah, guess what? It's a different generation. That's what people do. They, you know, they're not, you know, they don't have to show. I mean, in I, I grew up as a kid throughout the 90s, right? It, back then, if... If, if a player lost and they didn't go out and uh, do what, like what Jared Kellenick just recently did, right? If you're not kicking a, a, a water cooler and breaking your foot, if you're not smashing tables, throwing chairs out onto the court, then that player must not really care. And that's, uh, you know, that's got to be the mindset that Carly Lloyd and Alexi Lawless have because they were just talking ridiculous, like, oh, this team, they're too you know, they're, it, it's not just confidence. They're they're arrogant, and and the teams know that they can beat them. No, they're, they're not arrogant. They're just having a good time with fans. Do you see all the fans there that were so happy that they were moving on to the next round and got a chance to take pictures with the team and smile with them, dance with them? Come on. Carly Lloyd and Alexi Lawless jokes. Carly Lloyd, yeah, she was really good. Alexi Lawless, he's been 
uh, you know, he was good in the night. Like the, the most notable thing about his career was that he had a long hair and long beard. Like was that was the thing he was most known for. Okay. He was on the U S men's national team in the nineties. Uh, were they a little bit decent then? Yeah, but not that good. <laughs> Did he get himself, uh, into some leagues in Europe? Sure. But I mean, come on, it's, it's Alexi Lawless. I mean, I, the guys, like I said, for being one of the best Americans in a time where <laughs> the American soccer was like absolutely garbage, he's just been riding that like his whole uh, career. <laughs> you know, like to be able to say, well, I was the best uh, at the time. Oh, well, yeah, well, guess what? The time, <laughs> it, 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 that's not something that's impressive. So uh, I, I don't need to hear any sort of garbage like that out of that guy's mouth. Uh, so uh, there's that. Uh, I know the other thing, uh, you know, a lot of people seem to be upset about is uh, the coaching decisions. And yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know why it took until now to get Rose Lavelle in the starting lineup. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully... Uh, you know, she's not going to get to play in the next match, but hopefully seeing how uh, a player, even though it didn't work out for them, can at least, ha ha putting a player out there that at least provides energy to the team, hopefully he's got somebody else on the roster that he knows that can provide that and wake everybody up uh, in the next game. Because the next game, you know, you lose and you're out. So you got to win to move on. So hopefully uh, they can get that figured out. Oh, right. There you go. That's uh, our main topics and headlines, though. So let's uh, move on to our rundown of what else happened this week. Let's get on uh, and, and uh, let's talk some Seahawks. All right, and since the last episode, the Seahawks have started training camp. It started out kind of shaky, right? Because we went into the first day of training camp with a Devin Witherspoon being the only person in the entire draft who had not signed <laughs> his contract. Okay, so he's not there at the first day. And I, I got to say, I was panicking. I was like, okay, he's holding out. I, I, if you guys don't know the way... The draft works now. All the picks are slotted for the the cap that they're going to get, for the salary that they're going to get. Now, what players can do is they're negotiating how much of the money they're getting up front, uh, what, you know, in, in signing bonuses uh, and and whatnot. So, how much of that money is guaranteed, uh, and how much of that money are you getting up front right now today? So that's what he's holding out for. It does, he's not getting more money. He's not getting less money. He already knows how much money he's going to get when he was drafted uh, at number five. So to me, I was like, is this really worth missing training camp for? And how much are we talking about missing? I was like, if, if this goes on long, this is not going to be a good look, especially for Devin Witherspoon, because this team is stacked at the corner position. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're the number five pick, always compete. That is Pete Carroll's motto. You can't just be missing training camp and expect because you're the number five pick that you're going to get uh, you're going to get a spot in there. I mean, we've seen it ourselves, right? We we remember 10 years ago. You know, uh, well, 11 years ago, right? We, we, we get Russell Wilson drafted. Uh, we just signed Matt Flynn, though, to a pretty sizable contract. Doesn't matter. Russell Wilson outperformed him. He gets the starting job, right? He earned it. Devin Witherspoon needs to be at training camp to show that he earns a spot, not just because he's the fifth round pick, but because he, I mean, the fifth overall pick, but because he has the skill. Thankfully, it didn't last long. Second day, he gets the deal signed, comes in, and, and and starts working out, and he's been looking good. Uh, you know, good for him. I know that he got like 85% of his contract guaranteed, and, you know, I'm sure with however, however much that he got uh, up front, he's happy with it. You know, uh, I know it was going to be a little bit tricky because three 
out of the four people drafted ahead of them were quarterbacks. And because they were quarterbacks, the three quarterbacks, even though it was one, two, and four, the number three pick, another guy that I was hoping we would get, uh, he uh, didn't get a 100% guarantee. But one, two, and four, they were the quarterbacks. They got their deals fully guaranteed. Uh, so, you know, that that's what I was worried about. It was like, okay, Devin Witherspoon's the number five pick. He's a corner. That's not going to be the kind of thing that happens. Just hopefully he realizes that and will just get whatever the most that he can. And uh, they'll shake hands, agree to it, and sign it and get on from there. Thankfully, that's what happened. Uh, and to get, like I said, uh, so far he's been looking good. He's looking like, yeah, he's a starting quarter. He's been lining up on the outside. He's been uh, lining up in the slot. And he's looking like he can handle playing corner on either side of the ball, uh, whether it's on the outside or in the slot. So that's going to be real. That uh, sort of um, flexibility for him is going to be really uh, huge for the Seahawks this year. Now, the other uh, thing uh, that happened uh, during the summer was Quandre Diggs restructured his deal, and he converted his 23, uh, 2023 season uh, contract into a signing bonus, freeing up cap space for the Seahawks. <laughs> Good on Quandre Diggs, getting his money in his pocket while freeing up cap space. You got to love it. And I heard him uh, on a couple different shows talking about it. And yeah, you know, good, a uh, good deal for him. Gets more money in his pocket. Now um, he'll get his uh, future years restructured a little bit and it, it opens up some cap space uh, here and uh, going forward. Uh, and again, we're just, you know, a few days into training camp, hopefully uh, that means that gives them some, some still gives them some wiggle room to, because we got Devin Witherspoon signed now. So uh, they got that done. The, they got the Quandre Diggs thing done. They still got cap, cap space to be able to go out and sign a defensive lineman throughout training camp if they need to bring somebody in. Uh, speaking of that, uh, yeah, uh, everybody that has been worried about the defensive line, uh, and like I said, Draymond Jones was like one of the top defensive linemen uh, signings out there in free agency. Again, if you're not watching training camp videos, you should be. Uh, and if you do and you see Draymond Jones, you're gonna really, <laughs> you're gonna say, "Oh, okay, yes, that is why they signed him, and that's why they gave him that big deal." He's looking good. Like, oh, like, like we said, already going to be a huge improvement over what we had uh, last year. Is he playing nose tackle? That's been like the talk of the town, right? Everybody's saying, but there's no, there's no nose tackle, and they play, uh, you know, uh, a three-four defense. Well, it's four-three. You know, it's three-four with four-three principles. He's, he's, he's in the middle of that defensive line and causing havoc. It's, it's looking good. Um, go check those videos out on the C they, they post them on the Seahawks official Twitter and whatnot. So you'll, you'll, you'll see them, uh, and you're going to see Draymond Jones doing quite a good job. Uh, uh, Zach Charbonnet signed his rookie deal, but unfortunately, uh, he's been out, uh, with some sort of shoulder injury. no, details more than that they are getting it looked at uh so they they find out more information which does not sound good necessarily it doesn't mean it's a bad thing but you know i i just the way we we've seen pete around here for a long time so we kind of know know the way he talks when he says like oh you know it's just something that they're looking at um we got to get it checked out. We don't know really it is. That that's a little bit concerning to me. Uh, that with that, uh, K nine, Kenneth Walker. He's also got an injury. He's got a groin injury. He's not playing or practicing right now. 
uh, and there's no timeline for when he's coming back. Uh, but again, if you hear the way Pete talks, you can kind of tell like, okay, they're taking it easy with him. It's a groin injury. They just don't want to aggravate it before the season starts so they can uh, go easy on him. It's just the beginning of training camp. Uh, I mean, they just now started wearing pads at practice. So nothing's been like full, uh, full bore tackle uh, practices or anything yet. So this is a time to take it easy and not put extra stress on that uh, injury if you don't need to let it give it the time to heal up and, and be ready for the actual season. Uh, and then the other uh, player we got to mention is Jackson Smith in Jigba. Hoo-wee. That guy is looking like an absolute star. I mean, uh, his one-handed catch the other day went viral. Uh, you know, the keep posting videos of him, watch the way he runs his route uh, against top corners in the league. As a rookie, he shakes him, he bakes him, he gets he gets open. It's what he's done his whole career, uh, you know, his whole life probably. You know, I'm sure he was doing it in middle school, high school. We know he did it in college, and he's doing it here uh, at the pro level. Like you, like we said, th- this guy, you could tell uh, that he he just knows football and. Uh, he knows how to get open. He knows where he needs to be, where he should be, and uh, he has the physical ability to be able to get there. Uh, I know there was a lot of talks about how, oh, uh, well, maybe he's not that fast. You know, he's not running the the forty, um, but and, you know, and and uh, it doesn't look like he's that fast on film. Okay, well, you know who did run the forty? Jerry Rice. 471. Does that sound very fast? No. Who's the best receiver of all time? Jerry Rice. Okay? <laughs> you, you can't just go off numbers uh, in, a, in, a, in a draft combine. Uh, there's workout warriors that put up great looking numbers in the draft combine every year that turn out to be nothing. Trust me. I know. I am... Uh, also an Oakland Raiders fan from the time I was like, I don't know, like three, four years old and I could play a uh, tech mobile, <laughs> you know, the, the, they were the good team on there. So, uh, and they had cool black and silver colors. Uh, so I just liked them, uh, because of that, and I'm still a fan to this day and watching them, uh, throughout my entire life as well. I mean, you guys remember Jamarcus Russell, right? A uh, physical freak could throw it like the, an entire length of a football field from his knee. Uh, Darius Hayward Bay, fastest forty time at the time. Uh, you know what did these guys turn out to be? Absolute garbage. <laughs> okay, <laughs> absolute garbage. So uh, you can't just say, "Oh well, they had a good draft combine, uh, so they're going to be good." No, like look at what they did on the field and look how they do it. Uh, see if they actually that skill actually is going to translate to the next level. And with JSN, when you watch, yeah, you could tell that uh, that that this guy has it, and it's going to translate at any level. And so far, it's looking like uh, defenses uh, playing against the Seahawks are going to have big trouble on their hands trying to uh, you know cover now DK Metcalf. Tyler Lockett and JSN, nah, not gonna, not gonna be done. <laughs> we're 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 gonna have a good season on offense. Uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, that's the Seahawks. Though that's a uh, training camp right now. Everything's looking good. I, I mean, other things, I guess, of quick note. Uh, Olu Oluwatimi and uh, Evan Brown. They're battling for that center position. I'm hoping Oluwatimi wins it. Uh just because of what that would signify. Yeah, they brought in Evan Brown as a veteran to compete for that spot, but if a fifth-round draft pick uh, comes in and wins that center spot, that means they really believe in that guy and that he has the ability to be the starter and lead this team for years and years and years to come. So 
I'm hoping he wins the job just because to me that would signify that's what they believe uh, in Ola Batimi, that he could be the guy, right? And we haven't had the guy at center since Max Unger left. So it'd be nice to have uh, a solid guy there again and to have him around for uh, years and years. Uh, and I think that's everything I have of note for the Seahawks training camp right now. There's going to be a lot more to talk about um, Yeah, as we learn more about these injuries that are going on with Charbonnet and, and K-9 and, um, you know, watching these uh, battles at corner and uh, other positions to see who's going to win these starting jobs heading into the season. All right, so there's the Seahawks. Let's move on to our next team, the Mariners. Okay, and we already talked the talked the trade deadline. Um, I mean, what 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 else are we gonna say? They they. They've been playing good. Like I said, they had the second best record in all of baseball for the month of July. We had a game against Minnesota, won 9-7. Next game against Minnesota, win 8-7. A win against Arizona, 5-2. Then we lost the game to Arizona, 4-3, close. Um, That was a bummer game to watch. Uh, In the end, just because uh, Julio came up in the ninth again, in a in a clutch moment with runners on base, chance to tie the game or win it. And dang, I I think I saw a stat now. He's been up uh, in the ninth inning um, with runners in scoring position like nine times this year. Um, And he's like struck out six times. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, either struck out or not gotten a hit like in, in nine of those bats. So it's not looking good for his clutch factor uh, so far this year. And I'm sure, you know, he, again, he's young. He's like, what, 22? So he's he can get that turned around. Uh, you know, it's not something it's like he hasn't been in the league so long um, that, you're going to say, oh, this guy can't do it in clutch moments uh, because we saw him do it in clutch moments last year. So it's it's not something you could say about him, but it is something to talk about this year because he is not coming up in clutch moments this year for whatever reason. Um, you know, I think mostly it's pitchers have figured out uh, now in his second year how to pitch him and how to pitch around him, and he just hasn't fully figured out how to readjust to that. I again, so young. I'm sure he will get it figured out. Hoping he'll get it figured out. Um, but he's been just on an absolute tear in general lately. I mean, what he's like on a what is it? What is it like nine or ten game winning streak and reached base in like 25 or 26 games in a row. So, you know, like I said, heating up. And uh, again. A guy by the end of the year, you're all gonna everybody out there who didn't uh, vote for him in All Star game is gonna be like, oh yeah, I guess I, he's an All Star caliber player, right? He should be an All Star. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there was that game. Uh, we had a win against Arizona for nothing. Then we won against Boston six two, and then uh, the game I'm record uh, the night I'm recording right now, uh, we just lost to Boston six four. Uh, yeah, it just was a uh, again. The, t- tonight's game was just as uninspiring as the moves that the front office made uh, at the trade deadline. Uh, you could kind of tell that uh, we had both new players or two of the players who were at the major league level that we traded from Arizona, uh, Rojas and uh, Canzone. They they were in the starting lineup today, so they're just like kind of learning and getting acclimated uh, to their new uh, clubhouse and surroundings uh some of the other players you could tell that you know they just they're bummed out that uh you know seawald was traded away because it was somebody they liked so it just yeah uh uh, at there was times tonight where they played really good and and they they were stringing hits along they obviously were able to get four runs together which would normally uh be a win for the mariners 
uh, unfortunately, Bryce Miller did give up all six of those runs. Uh, so it, it wasn't good enough tonight. But they did give themselves a chance throughout the night. But uh, there's uh, there's times uh, where it did look like they were kind of uninspired, just like the front office was for the trade deadline. But yeah, that's kind of the recap for the Mariners. We already talked a lot about the trade deadline, so that's all we need to go over with the Mariners. So let's uh, go ahead and talk a little bit of Kraken, which is going to be a weird one. Okay, so now we're going to talk Kraken. And like I said, this is weird because I, I, I just had no clue what was going on with the Kraken news this week? Okay, so nothing really happened with the team uh, in general, like team construction wise. We're in the we're in the off season, so obviously they're not gonna they're not gonna play in the game. They're not practicing. They're not in any sort of uh, training camp right now. It's not preseason, so nothing to go on with the team. You're just gonna be looking at you know roster construction normally, right? But then uh, you know across my timeline, I see all this stuff about. Uh, book talk. I, I don't know what book talk is. And then we, <laughs> you know, I don't have a TikTok, so I, I don't know what book talk is. Um, but then, uh, then we see, um, Alex Winberg's wife, Felicia, uh, make a post about how inappropriate it is for all of these, uh, posts that have been made on book talk about, uh, Alex Winberg and, uh, sexual harassment and, stuff he gets in his DMs and all the content that's being made on. I'm, I'm like, what's going on? What are they talking about? And I'm not on that, that portion of social media. So I don't even know what's going on over there. Uh, but apparently, uh, you know, there's some sort of TikTok trend thing called book talk where these, uh, women were like fans of some sort of like, uh like these books that were based on like some sort of like you know they were romance novels but it was like set in it, they, it was like romance novels about hockey players apparently and alex winberg good looking man uh i guess fit the description of one of the characters in the book or something. So all these people on TikTok uh, and this subsection of TikTok called Book Talk where they're fans of books and then they make content around books. And so these people were making this content about these uh, hockey romance novels. Uh, they honed in on Alex Winberg and were making a lot of content about him. So, uh, and apparently this, again, because I'm not really paying attention uh that closely to everything that goes on in social media. When I look at social media, I'm just going there to get my news. Like uh, I have social media to follow uh, sports news. Uh, I'm a big fan of wrestling, so I follow wrestling news. I, I'm a big fan of video games, so uh, video game news, and then like movies and TV, like you know, to know. So I know. So I always know like what's coming out, what's being reviewed, what the reviews are. So this is all stuff like just based off of like news. So I don't know what's going on with all this uh, other, you know, content stuff, right? Uh, so we, we, we see uh, his wife, you know, post this, and then it just become I guess it just blew up over there uh, that uh, everybody was getting so upset. And uh, it's, a, it's a shame uh, for uh, on the Kraken, because apparently they were like, uh, at for some time they were like encouraging this uh, apparently whoever like, one of these women uh that was like the top content creator in this space like kraken like even flew her out to a game or something or like had a meeting with her and you know encouraged her to do it because it was like you know like help it was like helping the fan base or whatever or this this section of the build this new section of the fan base uh, really weird I, like i said i don't know that much about it uh just what i kind of like skimmed across and saw you know but yeah in general you know if like you know sure go ahead whatever have your fantasies and and, and whatnot but when when you get to a point where you're um you know harassing the 
actually harassing the person and their family, then it's gone way too far. So in general, just like remember, like players and their families, they're human beings. <laughs> Leave them alone. Um, just kind of odd. Uh, like I said, there was nothing no other news to talk about with the Kraken. So it's kind of a weird thing. I knew I was going to talk about this week. Uh, so there you go. There, there's the only news that we had with the crack. And hopefully the, in the next episode, we'll actually have some, uh, hockey related <laughs> news to talk about with the crack. And, uh, but for now let's move on to, uh, a, a team on a winning streak right now, the Seattle storm. All right, and the Seattle Storm. Uh, since the last recording, they did have a loss to New York, which was really close, by the way. Uh, 86 to 82, and that did set a franchise record for the most losses in a row, 10 losses in a row. Um, so that's unfortunate. Um, but uh, they, they play their hearts out in this game. Again, at this point, uh, I mean, at one point during this game, they had a 17-point lead against New York. Uh, uh, you know, Brianna Stewart left our or our storm and went over to New York, and everybody was talking about this being a, a super team. We had a 17-point lead at one point. Uh, un- unfortunately, we could not complete the game in the second half. Again, just not being able to um, put a full game together to to pick up a win. Uh, but there's a couple of things that uh, were of note in this game. Sammy Wickham got the start, and she's looking good in that starting lineup, man. She's like looking her veteran pre- presence uh, at the point guard position is really helping this team out right now. I know we've tried out like a few different rookies uh, this year, but uh, I think Sammy is the way to go. Just that veteran pre- presence and that uh, the knowledge she has of the game is really um, lifting this team up right now. Um, the next team they had was Chicago, uh, where they win 83, 74, Sammy Wickham again in the starter. She got her first career double, double in this game. Gabby Williams. We got to mention her, especially starting in this win against, uh, Chicago there. Wow. She was looking like she was back to form back to her old self. You know, she recently had a concussion while she was playing over there, uh, in France before she came back and, uh, joined the storm when that, uh, whole, you know, uh, contract, uh, negotiate or contract stuff was up and, and worked out where, uh, Gabby could come back. Uh, this game, she looked like she was back, back to her old form. Maybe, you know, the cobwebs have uh, been shaken off from her concussion and she was looking good in this game. Um, yeah, that, uh, eh, eh, eh. And again, it was a game where they played mostly a complete game, and they are able to um, uh, pull out a win. Uh, now they played a, in the next game. They played against Indiana and won eighty-five to sixty-two. Now, Indiana are they a good team? No, <laughs> they're they're not uh, a great team right now. Uh, they have a better record than us, uh, however, but um everybody knows at last year and this year they just not they, they have not been a good team um so it, it's not a surprise that we won by 23 points because it's not a good team but our team has not been good either uh thankfully in this game we had a great first second and fourth quarters but again uh just not putting in a complete game you would say based off of the score that we must have played a complete game but no in that third quarter we were lucky that we had such a big lead after the first half because uh they played pretty poorly in the third quarter and then they came back out strong and played a real strong in the fourth quarter and uh built it back up to a big lead but uh, yeah it was not not a good third quarter now sammy and gabby um again they were in the starting lineup um which, you know, when you're bringing those players in, that means you're also <laughs> uh, reducing the number of rookies that you have uh, in the starting lineup. Uh, you know, it's making a big difference uh, to have them in, uh, both in and both playing um, to the potential uh, in the starting lineup right now. 
Now, Jordan Horston, um, uh, Ivy, uh, you know, uh, uh, even Melbourne, you know, we got a ton of rookies on this team. They're all looking like they're going to be good, but they're filling their roles really well right now, coming off the bench. And that's how it should be. They're still young, uh, learning this game. And we have good veterans on this team that they can learn from uh, and that still are playing at a high level. So um, th- that that's... That's good to me, and I, I hope we keep seeing this going forward. Now, with the Storm, like I said, we were looking so bad. I wasn't sure we were going to win very many more games. Um, so I was thinking maybe we'd just keep losing, right? And uh, get a uh, get ourselves a good uh, draft pick because, again, if we get ourselves in that lottery, uh, there's a lot of players that potentially be, could be coming out in this draft, uh, you know, if Caitlin Clark wants to, she can uh, come out in the 2024 draft, um, you know, and if we get ourselves uh, in that lottery and get and get the number one pick, maybe uh, Clark would decide to leave college. Uh, you know, Cameron Brink, that's another player that uh, this team could really use as well. Uh, a big defender like that. That would be really good uh, for the storm because we don't really have a like a big big, do we? We don't. So if you can land uh, players like that, then I, I think that would be a huge thing for the storm. Uh, but I mean, then when you look at the standings now with them winning uh, those two games in a row, again, there's only twelve teams in all of uh the WNBA we're in 11th place right now but the 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 difference between 11th and 8th place is only 4 games right now if if uh Sammy and Gabby are going to keep playing the way they're playing uh added into this lineup with a Jewel Lloyd that is looking like, you know, if this team had a winning record, like Jewel Lloyd would probably be the MVP of the league this year with how well she's playing. Then this team could potentially get themselves <laughs> into a playoff spot. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know. Let's, let's see what's there. Let's take a look. Uh, I mean, Wings, Mercury, Sun, yeah, that's going to be real hard. Dream, Mercury again, Lynx, uh, Lynx two games in a row, that's going to be tough. But then uh, Chicago again, Indiana again, Chicago again, uh, LA, uh, yeah, there's, there's, I mean, if they keep playing like they're playing right now, they could go on a run and get a, and get a bunch of wins with just what um 15 games left they could they could get themselves into that eighth seed uh and and they're i mean they're playing against the chicago sky enough it looks like down the down the stretch (laughs) that they could uh you know get them get themselves uh, ahead of them but do they with with the with the way the first half of the season went, do they really want to turn that on now and get the last seed in in the playoffs, uh, or is it just better to get yourself in the bottom four and uh, even if you're in fourth place, just at least have a tenth uh, percent chance at at the first overall pick? And um, you know. Again, it should be a good draft class. Uh, I only mentioned two players, but there's there's more than that. That should be should be really good uh, coming out. That could help this team in you know multiple different positions and multiple ways. So that's something to think about with the with the storm. And if you're a fan of the storm, let me know what do you want. Uh, now that they won a couple of games in a row, are you hoping that they keep on that track, or are you saying? Uh, well, we're still kind of far away from, uh, eight, the eighth spot. So, uh, you know, it's fun to see him win, uh, but maybe we don't need to see him win enough to get into the playoffs. Let me, let me know how you're feeling.
Okay, let's talk uh, about our next team, the Sounders. And the Sounders, well, they really played with my emotions this week, okay? They're playing in League Cup right now. They needed three, not they didn't need three goals, sorry. They needed to win by three goals to advance in the League Cup. Uh, they're going against uh, Monterey. And this was ridiculous. They come out and score two goals. In the first five minutes. So because of the way they've been playing recently, you're thinking they got to not only do they have to win, but they have to win by three goals. I don't think the Sounders have it in them to do that. And then they come out and score two goals in the first five minutes. And you're thinking, wow, there's still 85 minutes left of regular play for them to (laughs) score another goal. Uh, and get three and then just hold Monterey uh, and we could advance and keep and keep playing in the in the league cup well that ain't what happened (laughs) they got my hopes up I was all excited next thing you know Monterey is scoring goals left and right we ended up losing this match four to two I don't know what's going on with this team Um, they just don't have it right now I mean and again if you look at uh, you know, if you're looking at like standings, um, and whatnot, because this is League Cup, so this these points uh don't have anything to do with M- the MLS um cup and league, right? So it doesn't count for points in MLS. This is a whole separate tournament that's going on right now between um uh, Liga MX and MLS. I mean, we're we're still fourth place in the standings overall uh, when it comes to MLS. But if we're going to keep playing like we've been playing lately, uh, I don't like our chances in the playoffs. Like, uh, you know, I'm the sounder there with this organization. They're the, they're a team that you're always kind of going, Hey, I hope they can put it together and maybe they can win. They can win a championship, right? I was kind of thinking of that uh, about the Sounders, uh, but with the way they're playing right now, ah, uh-uh, that ain't that ain't gonna be it. Um, they they're gonna have to start uh, putting some things together uh, and figuring out. I mean, this game they obviously gave up a lot of goals, so you, you would think de- defense, but most most of the time recently it's been their offense. Like they just cannot score. They scored real fast in this one. They scored early. Uh, but not often. They just scored early. <laughs> and then after that, it went right back to like, oh, uh, these guys got nothing on offense. They can't figure out defenses at all. Uh, so that's your Sounders. Um, you know, that now that they're out of League Cup, their next match isn't until, what, August 20th. So we're actually not going to have much to talk about with the Sounders the next three weeks. Uh, hopefully... We'll be hearing some things out of their camp, just talking about what these guys are doing to improve and get themselves ready um, once uh, league play continues. But right now, um, doesn't look inspiring, and uh, you know, don't I don't expect there to be too much news over the next three weeks. So let's move on to our next team, the OL Rain. <laughs> Oh, right, and the OL Reign, they are playing in the Challenge Cup right now and looking good for them, right? I mean, uh, Balser scored a penalty kick in the 71st uh, minute, and uh, they beat San Diego, right? one nothing. There you go. They advance in the Challenge Cup, and uh, their next match is going to be this Sunday, August 6th. Uh, you know, they're, they're actually winning it. <laughs> in their cup so uh we get to see them much sooner and uh i again even with 
I think it's eight players total, right? Because we have the OL Reign have five players total on the U.S. women's national team, but then they have like a, a player for um, Ireland. Um, I can't remember where they're all playing, but we got like eight players total. That's how good uh, our, our roster is, right? We got like eight players uh, playing in World Cup. Uh, so, uh, yeah, really good team. Hopefully, you can just keep uh, keep it up here at Challenge Cup as we uh, face our next opponent, um, uh, Portland Thorns. Ooh, my goodness. Uh, this, this is still the group stage, by the way, in this match against the Portland Thorns. Uh, but we know how good Portland uh, is as well. And we've already lost uh, to them this year. So this is going to be a good matchup, a tough matchup. Um, and, uh, you know, we've beat them uh, as well. So this just keeps going back and forth and back and forth with this team. So let's, uh, let's see uh, who can win this next one. All right, there's your rain. Let's talk about our Sea Dragons. <laughs> And the Sea Dragons, like we've been talking, they've been holding tryouts, and then they did a combine last Tuesday. And, um, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll start hearing soon about uh, players who obviously, uh, you know, not making it into the NFL that are going to be looking to uh, sign uh, with the Sea Dragons and, you know, just come to the NXFL in general. Now, some news that happened today... Uh, that was big news. Uh, by the time you're hearing it, it will be yesterday. But um, uh, on, on on Tuesday, uh, August 1st, season tickets went up for sale. So get your tickets now if you're going to plan to go to the games. Again, they're uh, XFL. That's the other fun thing about it. It's still football. It's still high-level uh, play football uh, if you watch the games. Uh, you, I think you will really enjoy it, and um, it's much cheaper than NF and an NFL ticket. So, uh, if you love football, um, I think you're gonna you're gonna love uh, watching the XFL and uh, watching the Sea Dragons here in our hometown, rooting for our home team. So there you go. There's your Sea Dragons. Uh, XFL in general held a combine and uh, tickets are up for sale for season tickets anyway. So uh, go grab them while you can. And that, my friends, is going to be our episode for today. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, and, you know, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, follow me over on social media uh, on twitter it's c underscore uh sports underscore show so c as in sea you know seattle uh having fun over there um posting about everything that's happening throughout the day every day uh you know, and then, uh, you know, here on YouTube, uh, leave me your comments. I, I you know, I want to know again, what are you, what are you thinking about the storm? Should they, um, you know, or what are you rooting for? Are you rooting for them to make a big run here in the last 15 games and get that eighth seed, uh, that they're four games back from, or you thinking like, ah, yeah, let's just, let's hold pad and, uh, get, <laughs> get ourselves a, a high draft pick because, you know, there's at least three or four or five stars potentially uh, coming out in next year's draft. Uh, so there's uh, Storm. Uh, if you're a Sounders fan, how disappointed are you? Have you been lately? <laughs> if you're a Rain fan, how um, excited have you been lately to see, you know, uh, Megan Rose over there playing uh, well for the women's national team, even though uh, Megan hasn't gotten to play a whole lot, but you know, it's, it's nice to see her in there, um, you know, and, and, and still back at home ball, sir, just like, you know, playing great uh, when we have matches here in, in the cup. 
How how you feeling about that? Are you excited for that? Uh, and then I don't know. Again, like I am not an expert on this stuff at all. I don't know anything about this TikTok book talk uh, stuff. Uh, it, you know, uh, if you know more about that, inform me of what's going on because I, I I don't really get it. Um, I just know it sounds like players and their wife and family been harassed, so that's not cool. But you know. Somebody explained the book talk thing to me, and, and is that like why is that so popular <laughs> uh, on social media? I don't know. Somebody just let me know. Uh, and then Mariners, I mean, let me know how do you feel about their trade deadline moves? I mean, like I said, to me, it feels like they said, I, I, I don't like I said, I don't want to say that the players that we got are bad and that, that it's a bad trade. It's potentially a good trade for you know 2024 2025 uh not excited about what it means for the team this year and what the front office is telling us about the the team this year so let me know uh how you feel about it and then uh just look at all the star potential that we have coming out of the Seahawks training camp. What do you think of that? Are you, have you been excited and uh, are you getting so pumped for football watching all the training camp videos? Uh, let me know. And who, who and which I want to know uh, what position uh, battles are you uh, watching? Like I said, I'm the one I'm most interested in personally is center uh, because I, I'm just really hoping that Olu wins that uh, center spot and, because what that means uh, as a statement for our future. All right, there you go. That's going to be the episode. Um, thank you again for listening and watching or however you're taking in the show. I really appreciate it. Um, share it with your friends so we can keep growing this community. Uh, and uh, oh, you know what? Uh, we here at the end... Of, Maybe I'll mention it again at the beginning of the next episode um, because I forgot about it until now. But the last couple of years, because we're, I just got to remind because I'm st- talking Seahawks and we're talking training camp, right? And the last couple of years, I've only been doing two uh, fantasy football drafts and two fantasy football leagues. One that I have uh, been doing with some co-workers at work the last couple of years and one I've been doing with uh, I actually do a video game podcast called the Daily Fortnite Podcast. It's obviously about Fortnite. Um, and I've been doing a uh, fantasy football league with those guys over there uh, for, uh, for years now. And uh, the last couple of years, those are the only leagues I've been doing. Before, I would do like an unhealthy amount <laughs> of of fantasy football leagues. I'd ha- I'd have like uh, you know half a dozen, a dozen uh, leagues that I would be in. Uh, and then I I, I cut it down because it's like ah, oh, this is too much. I could handle one more if there's enough of you out there interested uh, that are listening to this show that want to do a fantasy football league. I would start another one and i would do three fantasy football leagues uh i could handle that in my schedule i think and it would be really fun being in a fantasy football league uh you know uh with people i knew listening to this show who i know are uh in fact sports fans because you're not listening to this show if you're not a sports fan so if that's something you're interested in let me know uh, again, you can reach out to me on uh, Twitter, again, C underscore sports underscore show, uh, or, you know, email me and let me know you're interested, uh, Seattle Sports Show at gmail.com. Let me know if you're interested, because I think it could be really fun. Um, and uh, just based on the number of people uh, watching uh, on YouTube and listening on podcasts, uh, I think there's more than enough people uh, to get to play. There's obviously more than enough people, but there's enough people out there that I think um, there should be enough of you that would respond and say yes, that you'd be interested in and we could get a good, fun little league going. So let me know. 
All right, there you go. That's going to be the, the show now. Uh, thanks for listening to the Seattle Sports Show, where we watch the legends awaken and breathe fire. So take cover, because with a sea of sound, you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever. Thank you.